Welcome back to my channel. I am your favorite to mother of three bougie vintage and today we're gonna get into some things Okay, we are gonna get into some things some pop culture related things Because I want to give my opinions on the one and only Wendy Williams, but before I get into that Let's talk about some other hot topics. How you do it? Let's get into it well, The first thing that I want to drop on y'all or ask you if you saw is Megan and Kelsey going back and forth on the internet. Chow, I said not on Al Gore's internet. Are you serious? <laughs> Megan and Kelsey. Well, Kelsey won't throw no sub. Megan was on Graham Live with Jonathan, the hair guy. Obsessed with him, by the way. I love me some Jonathan. If you watch Bad Boys, then you know why. But like, she was on Live with him and he was calling her fake. <laughs> <laughs> and she was telling him to tell the people why he's mad at her or why she's mad at him. He was calling her fake or whatever. People thought she was talking about Asian doll, but she cleared that right on up real quick. <laughs> she was like, she's not talking about Asian doll. And then Chelsea, not Chelsea, chat. Kelsey didn't enter the chat. She entered the chat. Her foot is on Megan's neck, but at the same time, it's like, we want to know about the Tory Lane shooting. Okay, we want to know about the case. We don't really care about it, you doing her homework and her paying your rent. Like that's, we don't care about that. We wanna know what happened the night of. When you listen to the transcripts from the court, okay, that Mob Radio was reading, there's a whole lot, a whole lot of that's missing, information that's missing. And I'm tired of waiting for what's gonna unfold in court. So if Kelsey wants to come to the table and bring some tea, she needs to bring the pot of tea that includes what's going on in court, even though she probably can't. <laughs> Uh, it's an open case, so she can't. The girls were going at it. Like Kelsey posted on TikTok and she literally at the stallion chat. I said, ooh, the girls are fighting. And it seems as though Megan can't stay out of problems because this one was very subtle, but the other day her and Nikki was going back and forth. Nobody knows, okay? This one was so subtle, so hush, hush. The girls didn't clock it, <laughs> but Nikki's line in the Freaky Girl song that says drop a tear, Ro Roman's version of Freaky Girl. The drop a tear in reference to Megan not being able to shed not one tear during her Gail interview. Girl, I almost fell out. You know what? I almost fell out because I'm like, you didn't have to take it there, Roman. <laughs> Roman, you had to take it there. Okay, and we love a good Roman read. The barbs obviously are running with the drop a tear line, okay? I don't know if y'all heard it or not. After that was released, Megan Thee Stallion actually took to her Instagram and kind of replied to it. But that's why I said it was very subtle, you know? This was literally posted after Nikki dropped the Roman version to Freaky Girl or Super Freak. Whatever the hell the song's called, girl, I don't even be knowing, but I know Roman ate down. <laughs> That's what I do know. And on the topic of Nicki Minaj, this greatest hits album is giving, I wanna be Michael Jackson, but maybe you're not. So I don't know why she's releasing greatest hits. We want new music, new music not old music on a new album. Where do they do that at? Like, I'm annoyed. I actually am. Like, let me go see what the track list is. Queen Radio, I think is what it's called. Queen Radio, volume one. I love the album work, uh, the artwork, by the way. So we have Super Freaky Girl, Roman's Revenge, Did It On Him, Bees in the Trap, Chen Li, Do We Have a Problem? I don't even feel like that should be on here. L let's be real. We Go Up, featuring Five Yo, High School, Moment for Life, Truffle Butter, Itty Bitty Piggy, Barbie Dreams, Anaconda, Super Bass, Starships, Pound the Alarm. She did not put Pound the Alarm on here. Ma'am, <laughs> your love right through me. You see right through me. How do you do that? Big tune. Bad, favorite, save me, fly, seeing green, hard way, bussin', looking ass, catch me, girls fall like dominoes. I'm sorry. Did Beyonce not clear the record? Why she didn't put, how is she not gonna put What? <laughs> what? First of all, the entire Pink Print album needs to be in the greatest hits category. Let's start there. Nikki. What the hell? She didn't put feel. I rest my case. The case is rested. Electric chair. How's she not gonna put feel myself? She needs to drop a tear. <laughs> she needs to drop a tear because clearly Beyonce didn't clear the record. Does she even need to clear the record? What's going on? This is offensive. Now, Krishan and Blueface. 
Girl. I just, I need them to do better. Krishan is there getting locked up every other damn day over this man. They're fighting in public. They're fighting in private. This is Toxic Relationships 101. I don't know why Krishan feels like she's bringing awareness to the people because that's not what it's giving. She's really stuck here. It's giving strongholds. Shut up! I want better for Krishan. They both need to leave each other alone. Their relationship is actually really sad to watch. They need help. They need therapy. You need a therapist. They don't need each other. That's for damn sure. I'm not into their relationship at all. I feel like they need to break up expeditiously. ASAP! They should have been broke up like three years ago. <laughs> they should have never got together. It's so unhealthy to watch them. And I also feel like the blogs don't help at all. Them constantly posting them, like there's some kind of couple goals is not it. So shame on the damn blog, but shame on Krishan and Blueface. Like, are they addicted to attention? Like, I don't I don't really understand what's going on with their, their tomfoolery, their dynamic. I think it's a mess and really, really sad, especially coming out of my situation. Obviously it wasn't like that, you know, there's not videos of me puking in a Rolls Royce or whatever. <laughs> the relationship is just volatile. I feel like they both really need to mature and grow and they need rehab and they need to be away from each other. ASAP! Their relationship is really unhealthy, really, really unhealthy. So I'm in the middle of filming pop culture, but like the topic, I don't wanna do all of them. You don't wanna do all of them. Uh oh, okay, manager. Okay, wait, is there anything else? I gotta go, I gotta keep filming. Arigato. I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> anyway, and before I continue, I mentioned Beyonce when I was speaking my piece about Nicki Minaj. On the topic of Beyonce, Santana and Chloe hanging out again has me puzzled because y'all saw when they was dragging Santana for his old tweets about Blue Ivy because what are you doing, sir? What are you doing? Obviously we, we know between the years 2009 to 2015, 14, Twitter was a different world, okay? A different world, <laughs> a different world. So people would be popping off on Twitter a lot, never thinking in a million years, one day these tweets is gonna come back to bite you in the butt. But, no pun intended. <laughs> Santana was one of those people. City girls had their, you know, their run with this. You get canceled over your old tweets. It's a thing, it happens, okay? So Santana had tweeted some horrible things about Blue Ivy and, um, well, the people were not gonna let up about it. They dragged him and he was pretty much unapologetic and then came through with the uh-oh, 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 oh no, no. Need your head, woo, baby. Sir, he pretty much said, it is what it is, I tweeted it, like, you know. He was like, y'all not about to cancel me over this, blah, blah, blah. And if y'all peep game, you see that Beyonce is very, very calculated and shady boots, okay? So I believe Santana dropped his song and Beyonce ended up dropping something on the same day to take the shine away. Don't sleep, okay? She gonna get her lick back in blood. I don't think you can never. I'm hell or high water, it's gonna happen. Anyway, Chloe and Hallie are obviously Beyonce's artists. They are signed to Beyonce's record label, blah, 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 blah. So Beyonce being Chloe's mentor, Chloe don't have no business associating with Santana unless Beyonce and Santana had a sit down at one point or another and hashed out their beef, if they have any beef. First of all, if you talk about my child, we got beef for life, okay? Period. Y'all can say whatever you want to say about me. You say something about my kids. It's up. <laughs> like, it's up. I don't care what the hell it was. It's up. And you know, people don't really get that until they have kids, obviously. Well, really, it's supposed to be a given, but it's not, apparently. So, like, for me, I always had this thing where I would never call anybody's kids ugly because I was not a mom yet. I'm like, I don't know what my kids gonna look like. I ain't gonna call nobody else's kids ugly. <laughs> so, like, if I didn't think that a child was adorable, you know, I was not gonna be like, that is one ugly baby. Like, <laughs> that's not something that I would ever say. So, um, but people don't think that way, right? Cause I would hear people refer to children as ugly or, and I'd be like, you cannot say that. Even if you're thinking it, don't let it come up out your mouth. 
that's next level, you know? But neither here nor there. Santana and Chloe being chummy again after that fiasco is kind of wild to me because first of all, I am about to be guilty by association and I'm not gonna have anybody looking at me crazy. And I'm not about to risk my music career. I'm not about to risk getting blackballed over no Santana. Now Santana has a mean old pen, okay? He be writing the girls and eating the girls up. But if I were Chloe in the situation, I would not be caught dead with no Santana. He couldn't even sit behind me like he was at the VMAs. You need to leave. He couldn't sit behind me. He couldn't sit near me. I wouldn't take no picture with him. I wouldn't text him, call him nothing. Be like, I have to distance myself from you. I am sorry, but Beyonce, the Beyonce <laughs> is my mentor. I'm signed to her label. I cannot be associated or affiliated with you at all because you talked about her child. As much as Beyonce doesn't read the press and it, she is very much ear to the streets. You could tell by listening to her last album that she's ear to the streets. Dead ass. Okay, dead ass. Like she is, you know, she peeps. There was quite a few references in there that or on the album that you could tell she she knows what's going on in pop culture. Yeah. So don't sleep on Miss Miss Honeybee. Miss Honey, Miss Honey. Okay, don't sleep on Miss Honeybee. But if I were Chloe, it would be a no-go for me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hang out with Santana. You talked about that lady's baby. Yeah, no. <laughs> Also, Nikki got her first number one. Bless her heart, girl. Okay, she did it on her own. No feature, about damn time. It's about damn time. Okay, it's giving Lizzo. She been deserved a number one. Super Bass should have been number one. Let's be real here. So Nikki got her first number one, so we love her for that. And since we're back to talking about Nikki, we just can't keep her name out of our mouths. Um, <laughs> since we're back to talking about Nikki, I must talk about Cardi going back and forth on Twitter the other day with a barb. And then I think she was on, not Discord, um, Clubhouse or something like that after the fact saying like she was upset about how the day went and it wasn't supposed to go that way and blah, 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 blah. When she's going back and forth with barbs on Twitter, like she always ends up playing into their hand. That's neither here nor there. They brought up Offset and she tweeted, let's not talk about husband. Bitch, you out of order. Then tried to renege and backtrack and say she wasn't talking about Ken. Okay, she wasn't talking about Barbie's can. Ma'am, don't come with, I never said no name. You didn't have to. Let's, let, let's keep it a buck here. She didn't have to say anybody's name. We all knew what she was trying to insinuate with that. If you're arguing with the barbs, you're arguing with the barbs. Don't bring Nikki into it per se. At the end of the day, yes, she can control the barbs because they literally ask her for permission to do certain things and she either grants it or doesn't grant it. Or she can come and say, y'all need to chill. Okay, my fans, I love you, but y'all need to chill. But Nikki doesn't do that. So it's like she perpetuates the negative behaviors that the stands create, which makes her look bad. But in this instance, Cardi's on her own, girl. She ain't jumped into the lake, is drowning, and she ain't got no boat. <laughs> She ain't got no boat. You cannot say, let's not talk about husband. Shots have been fired. But everybody under the sun knows that Nikki's husband has some issues going on with the law. And everybody has their opinions about that situation. Highly problematic for Cardi to say that and then try to renege. Ma'am, where did you think you were going with that renege? <laughs> where did she think she was going trying to pull back and pull it back? No, don't backpedal and backtrack now. Say what you say and stand on it. Say, I was referring to that and what? Either you want the smoke or you don't. Yes, they brought up your husband, but Nikki herself did not bring up Offset. It's not fair. Keep it on the playground, I don't know. I don't know. In other news, Ari Lena is releasing an album on September 7th and I have not ever been so excited. I'm lying. <gasps> I'm not, I'm not excited for the album drop, but I'm excited for the album drop. <laughs> um, I can't wait to hear the album because Shea Butter Baby is definitely dear to my heart. Okay, I love me some Ari. So I'm excited to hear her her album, Age Sex Location, on September 9th. I will definitely be listening. If you guys want me to like review the album, just let me know. But like, I don't really be doing album reviews that much because they always get me for copyright and I don't have the time. I don't have it. I don't have it in me. I'm not interested in it. Ari Lennox, we gotta get her on the phone, get her approval to play the album for y'all before I do an album review. So if you guys can get Ari Lennox on the phone, then hey. <laughs> I'll do the album review, okay? She already released one song off of the album called Hoodie, and I'm hoping that there's gonna be merch involved in this, okay? Because why have a song called Hoodie if you ain't gonna have the merch to match? You need to have the hoodie for Hoodie, you know? And there's two more things that I want to lend my unsolicited opinion about before I get on out of here. First thing is the two black TikTokers slash OnlyFans gay creators that arrested and charged for murder? 
What? Uh, the craziest part is one of the guys mugshots. He is cheesing in the mugshot. I said guilty. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, no, seriously. I couldn't believe what I was reading. I'm like, these kids look so young and have their whole life ahead of them. I mean, they're making OnlyFans content and freaking TikTok content and you guys are arrested for murder? What? So one of them was arrested on August 10th and the other one was arrested on the 16th. So six days later. Do you know what that's giving? <laughs> While one of them was free, he made a GoFundMe to prove his boyfriend's innocent. But then they locked his ass up too. <laughs> It's giving somebody was not holding it down in the jail <laughs> as he should not. <laughs> I'm a snitch. You got me in here for murder. Oh, I'm telling. Okay, I am telling it all. Call me Wendy Williams, okay, which is the next topic I want to discuss. But like, I'm a sing like a canary. Period. Donna, Lynn, Pat, Lori, Shelly, Ali. You're not about to have me up in here arrested for murder. No, you're not. <laughs> Unless I did it, of course. But that's neither here nor there. I think that this situation is so sad because. People just be throwing their life away over nothing. Like they had a huge following, almost a million uh, followers on TikTok. Um, I don't know about their OnlyFans, but either way, they was getting to the bag. So what's beyond me is that people will be at great places in life and still do stupid, beyond stupid things. Like this is beyond stupid. It, it actually reminds me of like, the Rico case that's going on with Young Thug and Gunna and YSL in Atlanta. Uh, y'all got so much money. Y'all got so much money. Y'all are living your best lives. You guys can change the lives of others. And instead of doing that, while we're still in the streets. It doesn't even make sense to me. I actually need to talk about this YSL Rico case thing because I personally always thought that rappers do that kind of stuff, you know. Some of them don't have never, they came from the suburbs, girl, but rapping about that kind of stuff is popular, okay? It is what it is. People like to hear about guns, drugs, sex, violence, whatever it is, okay? That's what trap music is. I always thought that people were rapping about either what they used to live or what they've seen their friends doing. Never did it occur to me that people were rapping about stuff that they're still doing. <laughs> Unacceptable! I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. Why would you do that? Why are you telling on yourself? It's giving a Vlad TV interview. Who is coming up in here right now? How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I, I don't understand why one would be committing home invasions in Atlanta and then go into the studio and rapping about a home invasion to the point where the DA or the lady that is locking them up is saying this happened on this date and this person made this song and released it on this day. Like y'all are dumb, okay? I don't understand why Young Thug would still be so allegedly involved in street stuff when he's so damn rich. Or is it because these labels ain't paying these people? So they still gotta get it out the mud, which is crazy to me because on Instagram, at their shows, it looks like they're living lavish lives, like their bank accounts are not on E. So I'm confused as to why they would still feel the need to kick in doors. When you kick in a door, it's usually to obtain something. It's for theft. So I'm not sure why somebody that's a part of YSL would need to do that when they are clearly, you know, have an abundance of money. Allegedly. I, of course, unless they don't, because none of this makes sense to me. And she's not playing with them over there. She's like, if you're gonna do stuff like this in my county, <laughs> I'm gonna lock you up for it. Especially if you're gonna do the stuff and then go brag about it on a record. Ooh, Cause for me, I'd be like, you can't use, they recently have been passing these laws in like uh, in New York and I think even in Toronto where you can no longer use rap lyrics that are usually glorifying negative things to convict people of crimes. I think that's fair. However, what's becoming clear is that some people really are still in the street even though they don't need to be. And you have to be real slow and stupid to go and commit a crime and then go rap about it 24 hours later because your, your adrenaline is still flowing. What the hell is that? I hope they got some good lawyers that can prove their innocence because I feel like they should be out on bond. I really do. I don't get why they keep denying them bond. Like they need to be able to still work. But I mean, it is what it is. She not letting them free chair. They said no bond for you. They called them a flight risk. I'm like, he is not a flight risk. Like he's giving Tupac. Like <laughs> they don't want him to go to Cuba. So I think that whole situation is sad, unfortunate, and a mess, but apparently Gunna and Young Thug are in good spirits. So 
you know, all we can do is pray for them. <sighs> now, close out this video, I wanna talk about Wendy's because, what, not Wendy's girl, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want to talk about Wendy Williams. If you guys have been keeping up, you realize that one, they did her real dirty upon her exit from uh, the Wendy Williams show. When I was younger, I used to have this little TV in my room and for bed at night on BET, they would always play the Wendy Williams show. So I would always watch Wendy Williams show before I would go to bed and I always loved her. How you doing? Right, I always loved her. I always thought she was great. I never really initially, like when I was that young, I never saw her as messy. I enjoyed watching her show late at night. I liked the way she delivered the tea. Now, as I got older, I definitely realized she's a little problematic. <laughs> but I feel like I don't really have a, I like her, I don't like her. I just feel like she's Wendy. If you watched the documentary, the Lifetime documentary for Wendy, I enjoyed it. I thought it was done really well. Usually Lifetime is a mess, but with the Wendy one, they got it They got it all the way together. She was actually a part of it. But I think the biggest issue with Wendy is she's always spilling everybody's tea, but doesn't really own hers as much as she would like to think she does. Or she feels like her tea is nobody's business, but she's left to talk about everybody else's tea. She pretty much feels like her tea is on reserve. Like, I don't, I don't even know. But I feel like it's very much throwing a stone from a glass house because you can't be acting like you're issues completely in order and the people that you're talking about their stuff is not in order i don't think that that's fair as we know wendy williams is suffering a lot of health issues there's a handful of people that believe it's karma crazy and there's another set of people that think that it's just life i'm straddling the fence. I feel like it's partially karma spinning the block and coming to humble her because she's created an empire off of a lot of negativity and now they didn't froze her assets, girl. She can't even access the money that she's made over the all these years and which I don't understand. Wells Fargo, she's like trying to sue the bank and all kinds because they got her money tied up. Obviously, when she started dealing with her health issues, we really started to see it start to unfold when it was Halloween and she was wearing the Statue of Liberty thing and she fainted mid show. Like, what the hell? And I think prior to that, she had actually missed a few episodes and they never stated why she wasn't there or anything like that. But then later on, they started bringing in these guest hosts and that was pretty much who was hosting the show without much word from where Wendy's at, what's she doing, blah, 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 blah. Then eventually Wendy did go on TMZ and show her foot, which is uh, pretty much deteriorating and she can't like walk sometimes, she can't stand on it, nothing. If you remember, if you used to watch her show, like I used to watch her show, she would always do shoe camp. So they would zoom in and show her shoes for the day or whatever, you know, fabulous shoes she was wearing. But the feet that she got, she can't put them in no heels now, okay? I don't even think she could wear regular shoes. But like, it's sad to see her deteriorating, but I really feel like a lot of this is so that she will sit and reflect on her life. If you have health issues, you would think you would be a little bit more humble. You know what I mean? I feel like the way Wendy did her career, the way that she did her job, because essentially that's what it was. It's celebrity gossip. She is the pioneer for celebrity gossip. My whole thing is how she approached the celebrity gossip is really why people had issue with her. The way that she would say things, do things was problematic. That's why Whitney cussed her out. That's why Janet Hubert cussed her out. Like <laughs> people have never really liked her in the industry. Whereas other people think that she's just doing her job. Her job is to report on the stuff that we don't know about, the stuff that's going on behind the scenes. People drop her tea and she spills it on the radio or initially. And then she eventually got her own show and it was a talk show for a lot of years. But remember, Wendy Williams was not a daytime talk show. This is not Oprah. This ain't Ricky Lake. This ain't Sally Jesse. whatever her name is, girl. It's not giving none of that. It was playing late night on BET, not during primetime hours. They didn't even respect her enough to give her a daytime talk show. Even if she filmed it in the daytime, they was airing that at night. It wasn't given live. It was no Ellen DeGeneres. That, like, that's not the kind of show she had. And so I think that speaks volume. I don't wish 
bad on anybody, you know? I don't wish bad on Wendy. I feel like, yes, she was doing her job, but I think her approach to doing her job is what made it problematic. Because realistically, when Wendy was sat there doing Hot Topics, which essentially is this video, Hot Topic, when she was giving the celebrity gossip, she might be a little bit more shady than I am, okay? <laughs> A lot more, a lot more shady. She might say things that are really out of line and out of pocket. I feel like there's a, such a thin line between being a journalist and reporting what the people might want to hear and being messy. And she didn't toe that line a, a lot. She crossed it. Okay, she was never towing the line, she was crossing it. She should not have been able to cross it so damn much either because she was had a whole coke addiction. She was over there doing drugs. She don't have room to speak on nobody. I think the whole situation is sad. I think the people need to run her her funds. I don't get why they're holding their her money from her, but hopefully that situation gets figured out for her. But as far as her health goes, I don't know that it's necessarily karma. Part of me feels like it is a little bit of karma going on, but the other part of me feels like one has nothing to do with the other. I'm, I'm really on the fence about it. I feel like if she had a gentler approach and wasn't constantly feeding into negativity, I don't know Wendy's history, right? I don't know what positive things that she's done in the earth. I mean, I feel like the majority of her time has been used for negativity. And if that's all you're putting out, what do you expect to get back? You know what I mean? That's pretty much my thoughts on that situation. They need to run her her money. Her approach to giving the celebrity tea has always kind of been messy, which she's always said like she doesn't keep friends. She doesn't believe that she can be friends with the people that she's gossiping about. She doesn't get too close to them because then it's going to be like, well, you can't say this tea, you can't say that tea, blah, 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 which is why she behaved the way she behaved. But I don't think she had to approach it that way. I think that was the wrong approach. I think that she could have still had friends and they could have had a respect. I think she doesn't want people to try to control how she gives the tea. But there's there's so many ways you can give celebrity gossip without it being hurtful or painful. Wendy would often say things that you'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe she said that. <laughs> You know, so I feel like she could have been friends with, I'm not gonna say Nini girl, cause Nini be having trouble in all her friendships. She could have been friends with any one of the people that she's had guests on her show, right? She could have been friends with any one of them. But when it came time to her having to report on something that has to do with her friend, she would just gently let them know, hey, this is going into hot topics. You know, this is my job. I hope you're not gonna be offended by it. And just keep it very professional. You know, that's all she really had to do. But I feel like she didn't want to do that because she didn't want to have to be too loyal to anybody, explaining herself to people, because that's annoying too, right? I guess I can relate it to story times in a sense where if I have been through something with someone and we are on speaking terms still, I probably will spare them because I've forgiven them, right? And so I won't talk about whatever I've gone through with them on my channel. Whereas if they then cross me again, or if I keep forgiving them and keep forgiving them and giving them grace and they just no change, okay? They just keep taking advantage of my kindness. <laughs> they might end up being on a story time. That's because I know what kind of person or friend I was to them or sibling even, you know what I mean? Like if I'm telling like a recent story time, I usually give things time to set and marinate. So with the Tasmanian Devil series, had my sister come back between the time that she left to the time I started telling the story and said, you know what? I messed up. I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm going to do X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how you guys can forgive me, but blah, blah. if she came with that and showed us some kind of growth per se, I probably would have spared her until her next mess up. <laughs> Um, and if I saw that she's not grown, then I would maybe two, three years down the line release the story and be like, this happened, but that was not the case, right? And so my loyalty can only go so far. It's the same with my ex, like with Chucky. I for 10 years was in a situation where I'm constantly extending grace and forgiving and blah, 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 blah. And then once I decided enough is enough, then I can talk about it. The whole time I'm going through it, nobody knows because I'm not talking about it because I'm still working with the person and being forgiving of that person. Why would I come and say, hey, this person did this to me. And then I sit there and I'm staying with him and it's Kiki and, and no. <laughs> 
<laughs> you look crazy. I feel like it's the same kind of situation with Wendy, only I'm not dealing with celebrities and they pretty much, for the most part, remain anonymous. I guess Wendy doesn't wanna have to live her life that way where she's doing celebrity news, celebrity gossip, whatever it is, and she has to hold back and bite her tongue and not say the wrong thing or something that's gonna offend somebody. She doesn't want to have to live her life that way, so she doesn't let people get too close. But in turn, you could see that she's one, really lonely, really sad, really depressed, and I could only expect that from a person that does what she does. Because evidently, Wendy has zero balance. Right? There's no balance there. When she was doing her Wendy Williams show, there was no balance. It was just negativity all the time. Even like whether it's her in the blogs, you see her wig is looking crazy. Like, <laughs> like just zero balance. From her show to her wig, it was giving negative energy. So as much as we wish her the best and you know, want to see her health in do better and increase, I feel like she just has to do a lot of work on herself. And I feel like this time that she's had to stay home, that that's what she would be doing. But the few times she's made appearances to the blogs, oh, she claims she's married now too, Cha. Uh, <laughs> the few times she's made her appearances on the blogs or in the blog, it has not been any more positive than before. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with Wendy, but she definitely deserves her flowers because all the YouTubers or YouTube channels that are celebrity gossip focused and only do that kind of content, they have her to thank because she put celeb tea gossip on the map. I feel like she was even before freaking, when she was just on radio, between her and Perez Hilton, who Perez Hilton used to very much be like Wendy Williams, where it was negativity, negativity, negativity. He had to do a whole entire rebrand because he realized his life was not it when people were hating him for reporting the celebrity news and he was being nasty while he was reporting it. It was tiptoeing between gossip and slander and that's also a very fine line. And so the way that he used to do his blog was problematic and so he rebranded and people, celebrities love Perez Hilton now, whereas before they didn't. He grew. Wendy has pretty much been the same her whole career and her lack of care for the people that she talks about makes her come off sometimes as unprofessional because she likes to be shady and read the girls without showing proper love or giving them love and so people call her out all the time for it because she rubs elbows with these people. She sees them in person. I ain't never gonna rub elbows with some of these people that I'm talking about on this channel. Like, <laughs> I live in Canada, child, okay? The, uh, the closest I'm gonna get to rubbing elbows with somebody is probably at the damn Costco, waiting in line, okay? <laughs> that's what it's giving. So like, that's why a lot of these um, gossip channels are anonymous too, right? Because they don't want to be dragged. They don't want their identity to be known. So some of them use fake voices. Some of them only put up pictures of stuff and talk over it, do voiceovers, and they're making a bag, okay? Celebrity gossip is where it's at. And Wendy Williams is really to thank for that. You know, shout out to Wendy on that front, but as far as her money and her health goes, she gonna have to figure that out. But yeah, I love you all so much and it's time to go make some nachos. So let's go. I love you all so much and I'll definitely see you in the next one.